Hey, what's up everybody? Nexel here. Today we are playing Kingdom Hearts Union Cross, and as promised in the stream that we did a few days ago, we are going to be talking about these two new Rescuers Avatar boards. We're going to go through pretty much all the skills, the perks, everything, and then at the very end, I will let you know whether or not I think it is worth paying for these Avatar boards. So right off the bat, just looking at the actual, like, screen for the avatar board you're getting pet parts with these avatar boards this is new and i don't know if they're gonna make it like this where it's like this checkered pattern in the back whenever it comes with the pet parts but i think these pet parts look super cute they are super adorable um unfortunately as of right now though pet parts do not increase your game in any sense of the way it doesn't increase the activation of a skill perk it doesn't increase the amount of damage you're putting out it doesn't do anything for you really it's really just for aesthetics so to that extent i'm actually kind of sad that you have to buy these avatar boards in order to get these because they actually look super cute all right so moving into the actual notice itself so these are the new year avatar boards and you have until january 12th to decide if you want to pay for these so that's roughly about seven a little bit higher than uh, a week to get them you have about eight nine days based on when i post this video so you have that much time to decide if you want to get them now right off the bat we are starting with the price which is 7770 jewels which is bad it is really 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 bad because think about it this way so a five mercy pull for example the key art 22 that's out right now five mercy pull 15,000 jewels this avatar board is half the cost of that and that is just not worth it in my opinion that is just way too much of a cost to pay for uh this avatar board so i really don't like when they make avatar board 7770 jewels especially if you're a person that likes the costume it's just a really big deterrent to actually want to pay for these being three times the cost of a normal avatar board so looking at the parts here they are again if you're a fan of the rest of yours you might be happy for this and then you might be sad because of the cost but let's go ahead and talk about the actual uh, actual parts of this avatar board so the first thing to notice is that the male avatar board and the female avatar board have two very different sets of perks so the male parts come with the hat which give you rare enemy perk plus four and then the tail which give you rare enemy perk plus two these aren't exactly new perks of the game i just took a look at my actual rare enemy perks and it's pretty much standard to have the hat piece be plus four and the tail piece to be plus two so nothing really new there it's not really game changing there for the female one, you're getting the item drop perk plus 9 on both the hat and the tail. Now, it's hard for me to do a comparison for this because I don't have female avatar parts. I really only buy the male ones because that's how my avatar is created. Um, so I can't really say much about this, but item drop perk, pretty decent having plus 18 right there. I don't really know what the highs and lows are of that right now, but that's a pretty high number. I know it's not cracking 50, so plus 9 and plus 9 is actually pretty good. So two very different sets of perks. Um, and looking at both of them there's no real way to say which one is better than the other because they both are two very different perks and they both serve for two different types of events so for example the rare enemy perk mainly serves for events like the event coins event that are out right now so for those types of events where there's a chance of spawning a rare enemy and only the rare enemy is going to give you any sizable reward. So for example, if there was a rare enemy event and the rare enemy gave you gems every single time it dropped, that would be a good time to use the rare enemy perk. In that sort of scenario, though, we're also talking about when the quest enemy does not give you a substantial amount of reward. So for example, if in that sort of event, the rare enemy would give you a gem. And then the objective enemy, the enemy, the target enemy, whatever you want to call it, gives you nothing. That's the type of event where you'd want to use that rare enemy perk. Now, looking at the item drop perk, item drop perk is a perk you want to use when you know that an enemy that's going to spawn there in the event is going to give you something. So, for example, in the, in the like, gem quests the ones that were previously like the speed gem farming the magic gem farming power gem farming it's really good to have item drop perk because you know that objective enemy is going to show up every single time so instead of focusing on rare enemy perk which you don't know how it's going to affect the actual spawn rate it's better to have item drop perk because that enemy is guaranteed there all you need to do is squeeze out the item from it using item drop perk so they're two very different sets of perks used for two very different things so i don't think that's really comparable to talk about the two of them as which one is better than the other 
All right, moving on to the actual rewards in both boards. So we've got a list of five skills. We've got a list of four gems, and then we've got some chips and dales or whatever. So let's talk about the skills and whether or not I think they're actually worth it. So right now, the first skill is going to be Attack Boost 8 Max Lux++. Plus Plus. This is currently the best Lux++ Plus Plus skill out on the market right now. Unfortunately, it's still Attack Boost 8. So for me, my standard of acceptable Attack Boost in terms of using it for both rating and for content would be no less than Attack Boost whatever is too less than what's currently out so right now the best attack boost max is attack boost 11 so conventionally that means the acceptable amount for an attack boost skill to be used in both raiding and player versus enemy or pve content would be attack boost 9 max so with attack boost 8 that's kind of falling off of the market right now meaning that if you put this skill on a metal you are only going to be using that skill for rating maybe if you have no better metals you'd be using it for pve content but attack boost 8 max is starting to fall off the wayside especially with attack boost 12 max coming out this month with this coliseum so i highly expect attack boost 9 max is going to come out this month on a different avatar board so right now that attack boost 8 max is looking good if you're a raider you need that extra lux plus plus skill um, but as of right now i think it's about to fall right off the map soon if not this month then for sure by next month that's when i'm expecting attack boost 9 max lux plus plus to come out on a board that doesn't cost you 7,770 jewels. So right off the bat, yes, it's sort of good having that Lux++ Plus Plus skill there, but at the same time, I don't expect it to last very long. So looking at the next skill on the list, we have Defense Boost 6 Max, which I only recommend players to get if they don't already have three copies of Defense Boost 5 Max. The reason I recommend three copies of Defense Boost 5 or 6 Max, just based on whatever you have, is because there's on average three Keyblades with PvP. And with every single PvP Keyblade, you need to have a Defense Boost Max skill in order to rank high. So that's the reason I recommend that you only get Defense Boost 6 Max if you don't already have three copies of defense boost five max now the reason for that sort of comparison is because there's not much of a difference between defense boost five max and defense boost six max so defense boost five max decreases the amount of damage you take down to 10 percent or one over 10 now defense boost six max decreases the amount of damage you take to one over 12 or 8.3 percent so that's pretty much a 1.7 percent amount of damage difference that you can take with defense boost 6 over defense boost 5. Now that's really really not a lot. In order to kind of illustrate this comparison, I did some math. So if we look at our avatar and look at the HP stat right here, so this is the maximum amount of HP that any person can have without having max HP plus 800 traits, either pet traits or regular traits, or without any sort of passive skills. So that's the maximum amount of HP that any one person can have just by completing all the avatar boards that you unlock through the story quest. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about how much damage you can take in player versus enemy or PvE content before that next defense boost becomes relevant. So again, defense boost 5 max cuts down the damage you take to 10%. That means you have to take either 59,700 damage or more to get knocked out with defense boost 5 max. In comparison to Defense Boost 6 Max, which again only cuts down the damage to 1 over 12 or 8.3% chance, you have to take more than, equal to or more than, 65,670 damage. Now that's only a damage difference of 5,970 between Defense Boost 5 Max and Defense Boost 6 Max. Odds are, if you're facing an enemy, that 5,970 hit points is not going to become relevant at all. Those enemies are either out to get you with millions of points of damage, so at that point it's irrelevant whether or not you get defense boost 5 max or 6 max, or they hit you for some amount that doesn't matter if you have 5 or 6 max. I've never really seen the difference between those defense boosts like the 5 and the 6 become super relevant when it comes to passing PvE content. There's not really a lot of content that you can turtle your way through. The Keyblade War can't be turtled through. A lot of the recent big bonus challenges can't be turtled through. So just keep that in mind that Defense Boost 5 Max is pretty much just as good as Defense Boost 6 Max. In terms of PvP, where that Defense Boost Max skill is going to become the most relevant, 
the difference between 5 and 6 becomes even less relevant than the difference between 4 and 5, just because there's crazy defense breaking skills out there. We have Monster Sora, we have Elsa, we've got Sephiroth, we've got the Dissidia medals running around, and all of those do defense boost piercing, meaning that they will break through the defense boost and give you pretty much the maximum of damage you need anyways. Because that maximum amount of damage is so much higher comparatively to the uh, the reduced damage from defense boost max, that difference between 5 max and 6 max is really not relevant. So I only recommend defense boost 6 max if you don't already have 3 copies of defense boost 5 max. Going back to the avatar board here, the next skill on the list is going to be... Poison plus 2 max. Now, I've never, at least in a long time, haven't seen these status max skills become really relevant. The most relevance that the status sk plus skills or status max skills ever had was in PvP. In PvP, you can use these status max skills in order to guarantee your opponent will be afflicted with a status ailment. They'll use their Asuna, and then on the third turn, you can use, like, a paralysis max or a sleep max in order to make sure that your opponent falls asleep skips all their buffers and essentially you win that pvp match that's still a very valid strategy for today except the higher tiers you get you end up with more opponents that have resist skills on their buffers now this is why i keep telling people that resist skills on buffers are really really good and i don't know why a lot of people haven't really taken that to heart because in pvp even if your opponent has Paralysis 2 plus Max, whatever you want to call it, as long as you got Poison Resist 100%, what does it matter? So for example, in uh, in this sort of setup, not this one, which Kyrie is it? So this Kyrie, for example. So if you use Poison 2 plus Max, whatever, I have Poison Resist 20% on this metal, meaning that I reduce the chance of that maximum, which is 100%, down to 80%. Now think about it if the person had a special trait that was Poison Resist 100%. Effectively, that Poison 2 plus max skill becomes irrelevant, and I've never seen the status ailments really play a big factor into PvE content. Maybe it's because no one's ever tried it before, maybe that's a route I'll explore in future events, but as of right now, I've never really seen Paralysis being super relevant, Sleep being super relevant, uh, poison being super relevant. So this skill effectively I think is garbage Like I really don't see the point in having this in high level tiers of play because you can't really poison boss enemies um, It doesn't work in high levels of PvP because people have those resist skills So it really only works in my opinion best at low levels of PvP or when your opponents not suspecting that you've got some sort of status ailment thing in there So that's really the value behind poison plus two max again not really valuable at all Poison is also one of the worst status skills in comparison to Paralysis and Sleep, which buys you extra time. Paralysis will make sure the enemy skips their turn or skips medals, and then Sleep guarantees in PvP that they're skipping the first two medals of their setup. So I don't really know why they're like making Poison plus 2 max the skill here, when really I think it'd be better to have Paralysis plus 2 max. Just my personal opinion. Last two skills on the board are going to be attack boost 11 max with gauge 2 and gauge 1. Now these are very acceptable attack boost maxes because these are some of the best ones on the market right now. Again, attack boost 12 max doesn't come out till the end of this month, so having 11 max is super good. Having gauge 2 is good, having gauge 1 is good. The big trade-off is that there really aren't a lot of metals that require you to use a gauge 1 or gauge 2 skill. So let's go ahead over to my metal list and then let's take a look at tier 10s because tier 10s are the most relevant thing right now. They're the highest level that we have in terms of tiers. So let's just take a quick look at my tier 10 medals. Tier 10, Elsa only costs one gauge, meaning that attack boost 11 max, SB gauge two, doesn't work here. Second form Sora has a gauge cost of two. Yeah, you can use attack boost 11 max gauge two, but it doesn't matter because you could have just used a regular attack boost 11 max and second form Sora would still get the same amount. Uh, Supernova plus Ava, gauge cost of 2, so again, doesn't really matter unless you're using attack boost 11 max gauge 1. Nominee has a cost of 0, Dusk has a cost of 3, so this is sort of relevant to use like attack boost 11 max gauge 1 or 2 on this, because at the very least you're decreasing the amount of gauges you're consuming by 1. And even the Supernova plus Aset, gauge cost of 3. So at most, 
with attack boost 11 max gauge 1 or attack boost 11 max gauge 2 and even if the metal has extra attack you're saving at most 4 gauges which is really really minute those gauge reduction skills really make a play when it comes to the tier 9s so for tier 9 metals back in the day they made them super OP, but they gave them ridiculously high gauge costs. So for example, this Kingdom Hearts 3 Demix had a gauge cost of 5, the Anti-Aqua has a gauge cost of 5, Key Arc 20 has a gauge cost of 6, so really those gauge skills should be used only if you have a metal whose gauge cost is greater than 3 or higher, essentially. That's the only real time that those gauge skills come into play is during those really, really high gauges uh, for skills. So with tier 10s right now, I don't really see a purpose in having the gauge 2 skill as much um, unless you're using it on a copy metal like the Patrick Animals that I got or the Kingdom Hearts 3 Dust. Those are the real times where I think that is going to be the most important. Um, so just average skills in my opinion. I think it should have been like attack boost 12 max. I think it should have been attack boost 11 max gauge 0. That's where I think there would have been good value with these attack boost max skills gauge X. Alright, moving on to the other goodies of the board, we're going to get two sun gems and two moon gems, which is where the real value of the board comes in. Now, this is because you, on average, aren't able to buy sun and moon gems. You have to earn them. So, for example, in this past Union Cross last week, you had to earn a bunch of coins in order to get the sun and the moon gems. Um, for the event that's out right now, you have to beat an enemy in order to get the sun and the moon gems. So, to be able to buy two of these is actually pretty decent, especially if you're a very meta level tier player and you want to get all those Keyblades to level 50, you're going to need these gems in order to get there. Now, remember for me... In terms of leveling up your Keyblades, because really that's what these gems are for, is leveling up Keyblades, the standard is to get them up to level 35. Now, this is a chart I made in a past video that I'm going to show you now. So, this is the amount of gems you need in order to get all of your Keyblades to level 35, to level 50. This is just a big, long chart just showing you how much you're going to need. Now, to get all your Keyblades to level 35, you're going to need 72 Sun Gems and 72 Moon... 72? Did I say 72? 72 Moon Gems. So you're going to need 72 of each. And this Avatar board only comes with two of each. That's pretty small. Now, with t events nowadays, we're able to earn those Sun and those Moon Gems relatively easily. So last week, you had to do Union Cross, which again is farmable. You can do it as much as you want, and then you can earn those gems for free, no cost. Uh, for the New Year's event that's out right now, you just have to beat a level 100 enemy, and you get one Sun Gem and one Moon Gem. Piece of cake. So these two are very, very minute in the long run of things. If you're a newer player and you don't really have a lot of Sun and Moon Gems, they're going to come down the way for free as long as you can pass events. Buying them right now almost seems like a waste because I feel like Sun Gem times 2, Moon Gem times 2 is going to be, become almost irrelevant by June this year. I think there's going to be like every week, Union Cross, you get to earn one Sun Gem and one Moon Gem. I think it's going to become that later down the line because we've already got at least once a month Union Cross events where you're able to earn two Sun Gems and two Moon Gems. I keep like saying two and Moon Gems or like 70 Toon. But anyways, so Sun Gems and Moon Gems are becoming very more readily accessible and earnable in events lately so i'm not super concerned with the sun gem times two and the moon gem times two lastly you get one six star sp chippendale which i think doesn't matter at all we literally got four of these for free from the union cross this week the the uh, new year's super hard of boss event union cross so right now not looking too hot in terms of the skills i pretty much just pointed out all the flaws with them where they're good for and why they're not really that relevant all right, so before we talk about the... Actually, we'll just summarize it now. These aren't worth buying. Like, they're not. <laughs> um, let's take a look at this stuff. So, skill perk plus 10, skill perk plus 9, whatever. doesn't matter because of the advent of max skills. Max skills have a 100% proc rate, so you don't really have to worry about this skill perk plus 9 or skill perk plus 10. Second chance has a proc rate of, I think, like 93 to 98%, meaning that you're pretty much going to get it off every single time. So that's not a problem either. Um, and looking at the actual skills, all of these attack boosts are less than attack boost 9 max, meaning garbage. Um, and then defense boost 6 only matters if it's max. Garbage. Uh, so, sun gem times 1, sun moon gem times 1, not super relevant. Each of these boards costs 5,000 jewels, not worth it. Uh, looking at the... Looking at the Meow Wow ones, or the Flower Meow ones, 
super not worth it. None of these are max skills except, except that attack boost 5 max gauge 2, which is attack boost 5 max. We literally have attack boost 11 max right now. Not relevant. These, these look super cool. I'm, I'm actually kind of sad, though, that they cost the same amount as when they first came out. It'd make more sense for them to cost the 15 th or 1500 that re-release boards normally do. So I don't know why they made them 2500 but these skills, super irrelevant. Really, the one that matters is going to be that second chance 4, especially if you don't have one already. But you could just buy that from the Moogle shop for only 500 jewels, so I'm not super concerned about that either. So let's go ahead here, check out in the items. Boom, second chance 4 for 500 jewels. So that makes that irrelevant. So none of the old boards are really worth buying. Um, none of the new boards are honestly really worth buying. Really, the only reason to buy any of these avatar boards is because you like the costume. You think that the costume is cool, and then everything else is kind of like, oh, yay, I got a plus here and there. Especially the new ones are not worth buying. Just because they're worth 7,770 jewels, that's literally three avatar boards. It's two poles. It's halfway to a five-pole mercy, essentially. So 7,770, I don't think is worth it. If these were 5,000 jewels apiece... I'd consider it. I'd actually consider recommending these to some people. But I think they should have made this a deal, like a New Year's deal. Hey, here's a new avatar board. We're going to give it to you super cheap because you stuck by us around the New Year's time. But no, instead they make this really not very good avatar board um, and they make it really expensive too. I just don't think it's worth it. Even though, like, there's some good things in there, a lot of the stuff in there falls short and is not very good or is not very meta uh, to this point in the game. Or is, like, it's not so new that you have to buy it. That's what I'm getting at, is that there are better things down the line. There are better things to spend your jewels on. So right now, I just don't think these avatar boards are worth it, especially for that price. If they made it 3,000 jewels, I'd probably be like, you know what? it's worth it like that would be super worth it you get five skills you get nine gems that's super worth it to get it for 3,000 jewels but for 7,770 eh, that's definitely not worth it in my opinion so that's my analysis on the avatar boards whether or not I think you should buy them again I don't think you should buy them with one trade-off if you really like the avatar board I think you should get it I think that if you don't care about your jewels if you don't care about what's coming up if you just like something so much that you want to buy it do it it's just a game you know go have fun with it if you're not having fun with a game it's not a game at that point it's a chore so i'd only recommend buying these if you want the costume if you want that specific pet part but other than that i really don't think it's worth the time or the jewels to buy these because there are likely better things down the line coming up this month if not next month so that's all i gotta say for this as always if there are any questions comments or concerns feel free to leave them down in the comments below and i'd be happy to answer when i have the time my discord link is that away right in that yellow box i did check it recently it still does work so if you want to join us we still talk about a lot of random things we still talk about like anime series that are out right now we talk about things coming up in kingdom hearts we give seasons greetings things like that so if you want to be part of that community go ahead drop into that discord and just say hello but with that being said that's all for now thank you all so much for watching and as always until next time take it easy